And I also am a big advocate of using multi-use products. So let's say you do have something that does come in plastic. Can you use that eyeshadow for a blush and vice versa? Like what are ways to use that one product for different areas of your face? So that's also another way to save money and cut down waste because you're only using one product versus two. Hello, thank you so much for checking out Earth Care. I'm Sarah Christie. Today, we're on our way to LA to meet sustainability expert Janu. Janu has built a successful lifestyle brand that is all about living with the environment in mind. Now, previously on Earthcare, we've chatted about reducing waste when it comes to cosmetics or making your own DIY products at home. But hey, maybe that's not for you. Maybe you don't have those ingredients available. So this time, we're going to focus on the actual shopping experience, the do's and don'ts when it comes to finding and supporting sustainable brands in the cosmetic industry. Now there is a lot of greenwashing in the beauty industry. So hopefully by the end of this conversation with the help of Janu, we're gonna be able to spot it. Sustainability expert Janu, thank you so much for being on Earth Care. Previously on Earth Care, we've chatted kind of about kind of about low waste DIY cosmetics. But, you know, that's not the reality for everyone. You know, makeup is super fun. Watching makeover shows that they're a blast to watch, you know. So I figured we might as well lean into the purchasing power that we as consumers have and start making informed decisions to support sustainable um, companies that support both people and planet, which is where you and your sustainability expertise come in. Where does your story with sustainability begin? Yeah. So a few years ago, I got really into minimalism and this idea of just like living with less. Um, And I think the, you know, the sort of principles of minimalism and sustainable living kind of go hand in hand. It's all about, you know, using the things that you actually need and not bringing excess things to your home um, and just being more intentional about the way you live your life. And so it kind of just goes hand in hand. And I started learning more and more about where our waste goes and how just like we're literally digging holes in the ground to just put trash in it. And it was very eye-opening. And so I uh, just wanted to find ways in my own life to reduce my waste. And it just kind of started this whole journey for myself. And I decided to share it on social media. There is such a ripple effect, right? It's or a domino effect, whichever one you want to go with of, oh, oh, now I know that. And now this is connected and it it is very interesting. So, OK, sustainable sustainability with makeup. I mean, it, it does seem possible as much as everything is coming in packaging of some kind. It does seem like more options are being brought to the table, which is nice. The thing about, you know, if you put yourself in a makeup aisle right now, it looks like almost every product has changed their colors to like earthy tones and put flowers on it. Like there's so much greenwashing. So if we just start with like, what are some red flags to look out for when we pick up that product? Yeah. I mean, I think when it's comes in a plastic box, it is plastic. It's just like plastic, plastic all day, every day, I think is definitely a, uh, a big red flag for me. And I know a lot of times like on the packaging, it'll tell you it's recyclable, but a lot of times like it really isn't. Um, but there are companies that are trying to create products that are made from res- or like the product is, or the packaging is made from recycled plastic, which is still not the best, but it's better than hundred percent virgin plastic. Um, but I also like to use products that are natural as well. So that can be hard too, but I think when everything's just kind of wrapped in plastic or there's like a whole bunch of green and it's like very eco, but, um, <laughs> it clearly is wrapped in a ton of plastic and un- I think it's unnecessary plastic. Um, cause I know it can be hard to create a low cost products that don't come in plastic, but I think it's the excess of plastic that I tend to be on the lookout for. Right. Like when you have to get out your heavy duty scissors to get into (laughs) it, we have a problem. So what are some things on the uh, opposite side of that, that we can be looking out for to go, oh, okay, maybe, maybe this company is doing something right here. Yeah. So for me, um, I know it can be definitely hard to find makeup products that are affordable and sustainable. Um, Definitely on the pricier side, you can find items that come in aluminum packaging or 100% glass, Um, but those could be definitely really pricey, like Credo Beauty, for example, they have a whole section of like refillable and sustainable products, Um, but they are definitely very expensive. I think when you're looking sort of like at your targets, I try to go for items that come in glass or come in aluminum. I know the Honest Company, they have products 
um, that are in Target. I like their blush that comes in an aluminum tin. So that's a great like option versus having to buy, you know, a $60 blush. So it's all about using what you have at your budget because um, not everyone can afford, you know, an $80 foundation that comes in aluminum package. Right. <laughs> um, and I also am a big advocate of using multi-use products. So let's say you do have something that does come in plastic. Can you use that eyeshadow for a blush and vice versa? Like what are ways to use that one product for different areas of your face? So that's also another way to save money and cut down waste because you're only using one product versus two. That's such a good idea. <laughs> because I think it's so easy to get like into the habit of seeing someone on TikTok or YouTube, you know, say you need this product for this exact thing. And it's like, well, OK, maybe I do. <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea. Are there labels that we can be keeping an eye out for? Yeah, so there are definitely um, products that will have like a Terry cycle symbol on it. So you're able to recycle it with Terry cycle. You like go online and you print out the label and uh, nine times out of 10, I'm pretty sure it's free because the company itself will pay for it. Um, so that's definitely very helpful as well. Um, you can look at the symbols that, you know, say aluminum or recyclable. Um, but I tend to try to do as much glass and aluminum as well. And you can also like upcycle uh, glass jars. There's like face washes that I like that come in glass. Um, you can easily just keep those glasses and upcycle them for later. Right. So on the topic of upcycling, you know, the disposal of makeup isn't always the easiest thing because uh, unless it's a pencil, you usually have the leftover something like are there ways to properly or even some tricks to maybe um, reduce that disposal waste or like you said, upcycle. Yeah, so I know the I know a lot of companies are now partnering with Terry Cycle. Um, you can easily go on uh, the website of the brand that it is, and usually it's kind of at the forefront of their um, marketing. So that's definitely something to be on the lookout for. Um, and it also in terms of upcycling, I know I've seen a lot of people like they'll upcycle glass jars and like put, or it can be a plastic jar, and they can put, um, you know, vitamins in it when they're traveling. Or I know a lot of times we can get like little samples from Sephora, which I advise against. But if you do get little samples from Sephora, um, and sometimes those can be useful containers when traveling. So I know way back when I got a small little like skincare um, like uh, tester and I just like upcycled it by reusing it <laughs> for, you know, shampoo or face wash or whatever in the future when I was traveling. So I think it's just finding ways to, you know, incorporate into your everyday life. Oh, I love that idea too. So what, what are some of your own tricks? I know you mentioned a ton of upcycling and, and some of the, the products you'll look out for, but what are some of your tricks when it comes to, you know, finding a more sustainable cosmetics routine that even helped you in the beginning? Yeah, I think, well, one, just looking specifically at brands that, um, you know, that are all about being sustainable and, eco-friendly it can be hard sometimes when you're like looking for a foundation for example because I know when I first started like the shade range of like sustainable foundations like I wasn't even like on the range and I'm not even that dark so it was definitely pretty rough but I think finding places like um like Ulta Beauty and Cradle Beauty both have like um lists of just like sustainable and eco-friendly brands. So those have been really, really helpful. And you can kind of pick and choose based off of that list what you feel like is the best for you. Very cool. That's what you actually make a good point, you know, of um, there now being even more companies to choose from. What if we have a brand that we love and we've, we've been comfortable with them, but now notice after this conversation that, hey, they're not mentioning any kind of sustainability. What kind, what kind of questions do you recommend sending them, you know, going, Hey, why isn't this on your radar? Yeah. I mean, I am all, I'm all, always about, you know, asking your brand, well, why is there so much plastic or like, what's your sustainability practices or what is, or what are your goals for the future? Um, I think it's important to really call out brands because that's the only way they're going to actually make change. And there are some brands that I feel like have made changes only because people are, you know, asking for it and are demanding to have like plastic free or reduced plastic plastic options. Yeah. And, you know, we, I've talked about this before in Earth Care too. The fact that I think uh, how, however many years ago when I would start looking for the cruelty free, like the Leaping Bunny logo, that was almost impossible to find, especially in a budget that I could work with. Mm -hmm. But now it's like, 
you're weird if you are still like not cruelty free like what are you doing at this <laughs> point you know um so that we do we do have to like appreciate and understand the power we have as a consumer um if someone is listening to this or watching this and realizing wow i i really do play a role in this fight against climate change and i can play a role what is your advice to them if they're just starting off yeah, I think the biggest thing is just stop bringing crap into your home that you don't need. <laughs> I think we produce waste because we bring things into our home that we really don't need in the first place. Um, so if you just start there by like not bringing things into your home that you don't need, I think is a great first step. It was such a pleasure having you on Earth here. <laughs> this was a very fun conversation. No, happy to be here. <laughs>